long ago, the Bible in the book of Ecclesiastes made a very interesting observation for young men and women who were basically looking to become a couple, create a family, and basically live their lives together. In the book of Ecclesiastes, in chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, it says, Two are better than one. And then the verse goes on to state a few reasons why. It says, because they have a good return for their labor. Right? So if you're working together as husband and wife, and let's say you started a business, now instead of just one of you basically laboring away at creating a business, now you have two people who are basically laboring away for a similar objective. And basically, whatever that objective was, if you were, let's say, for example, if you were home cleaning, or if you were building a home, like back in the days, uh, people would get together and they would get some resources and they would build a home way back in the days. This is typically what men would do is they would make, they would literally build a house for their wife. And so obviously the two of you working together on basically any sort of um, goal will fare better because obviously two is better than one. And it says, if either of them fall down, one can help the other, right? So if they were literally to fall down, then at least you have someone to help you. But if also if you were to emotionally fall down or spiritually to fall down, uh, then the other person can be there to assist you, to raise your spirits up. It says, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up, right? And so in many of those instances where basically you've fallen down on your luck, and you have no one there to help you, the Bible, of course, says, well, you should have gotten a wife or you should have gotten a husband because the two of you can mount, of course, a stronger defense. And that's basically what the purpose later on of the scripture, where it also goes on to say, it says, and it says also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm, right? Obviously, not just referring to body heat, but also referring to sex, right? There's plenty of times where I've had girlfriends and, you know, your girlfriend gets cold and then you end up having sex. And then afterwards, of course, you know, you've generated body heat and then you obviously feel warmer after the fact. But of course, just, just for having another person's body next to you, you can basically uh, be able to keep warm. And typically women are a little bit colder uh, typically than men. And so they like to cuddle and it basically keeps them warm. And these are just very simple Bible observations that of course, many individuals have long forgotten and are currently now. And of course, in the near future, going to pay the price. And this is the most important part of the scripture where it says, it says, is it, although one may be overpowered two can defend themselves. And a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And that's basically the most important feature of this particular point of that the Bible makes in terms of the reference of pairing up between a husband and wife. It says there, one may be overpowered, not just referring to physically being overpowered, but spiritually and mentally being overpowered. And this is basically has been the government's goal for many decades in trying to basically break up the family unit for a reason. Originally, we saw this back in the 70s where they did this primarily with black Americans, which is why three out of every four black women never experience marriage. And why overwhelmingly, most of the children that are raised within the black neighborhoods are typically born towards uh, single mothers. This was done, of course, for a reason. Again, the Bible had said, what God has yoked together, let no man put apart. But of course, for the purpose of manipulating people, the government and governments have sought to break up what God has yoked together. And unfortunately, many of the scriptures are being fulfilled generation after generation. Uh, the Apostle Paul and I forget in which I think it was in the book of Hebrews, where in referring back to the original reference of Adam and Eve and uh, the Garden of Eve and the Garden of Eden, 
where Paul went on to say that the woman was deceived, right? Even Eve herself said that. If you read the account over in the book of Genesis, uh, the Bible says, you know, Eve says to God, when God then questions them about why did you eat? Why were you hiding? Who told you you were naked, right? Eve, the woman said, the serpent uh, told me, you know, that I could eat and my eyes would be open. And she said openly, the serpent deceived me. And then, of course, he asked Adam, why did you eat? Um, from the tree of knowledge of good and bad and he said you know the wife that you gave me uh, me you know gave me the fruit and i ate the fruit and as a result right and so paul later on made the observation where he had said later on that the woman was thoroughly deceived the man was not deceived the man willfully sinned and as a result uh, both he and the woman were basically cast out of the garden of eden and that is very similar to what we had today. When the women's movement was first getting underway, right? So back in the days, if we're talking probably, you know, 50 or 60 or more years back in American history, most people, you know, if you look at some of the old pictures, most people were typically well-dressed. Men had, you know, wore a hat. Typically, you saw people wearing basically their Sunday best basically every single day. Most young people wearing, you know, either a button-down suit. Most men were, were wearing a suit of some kind, basically looking like they were going to church. And for the most part, most of these men typically went to church. And that's basically how they met their wives, right? And then as time went on, and you had different periods where uh, individuals had attacked God. I believe it was like in the 60s or in the 70s, where there was a real push to attack church-going life and God in society. And as a result, men stopped going to church and stopped being leaders within the church area. As a result, women still went to church because it wasn't, they weren't as liberated as they are today. And so as a result, the church became very feminine and men left the church. And of course, later on, you had things like the women movement where they pushed women to be, to feel less shameful for engaging in uh, sexual practices, but that was typically because as a result of men, women were tired of men going out there and living promiscuous lifestyles. And then of course, they themselves, when they did it, were basically looked down upon as being whores or sluts. You know, they used different forms of shaming language, even back when I was in elementary school. There were some young girls who dressed a little more provocatively and many of the other young girls, and even till this day, women still do that, where women will typically utilize shaming language against other women who they view as, you know, being more slutty or skanky, etc., things of that nature. And of course, this was all done purposefully for a reason, for the purpose, of course, of breaking up the family, for the purpose of controlling human beings. And of course, God long ago had warned, of course, that this was going to happen. And you look back at different different societies, you know, when you look back at Rome, you look back at Great Britain, you see the basically the same thing time and time again, where individuals, of course, don't rely on the scriptures. They forget the wisdom of old from individuals who have long come before them. And they basically think that they can do things on their own. And of course, they suffer the penalty. Like I said in my previous video, what is coming for women in terms of prostitution is not something new to the game, as they say, right? When you look back both at America's history and when you look back in ancient Rome, you saw the exact same thing, especially as Rome started to fall, most women in their, during those times ended up becoming prostitutes, working in brothels. You know, you typically don't see too much of that today, although you will have like the strip clubs, etc., that you have today. And in places like in California and here in New York, it is something that they have been pushing for a long time to basically decriminalize, um, basically because many of these women, of course, don't want to be made to feel bad for unfortunately turning to this lifestyle. And in my opinion, hopefully we will see a revival of individuals turning back to the God of the Bible so that their lives will become better. The scriptures are, are, are basically unfolding before many individuals' eyes. The scripture where it talks about um, the one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. In many of the instances where I've traveled across many different countries, and typically when I meet many young women who either are covered in tattoos or typically are single mothers, 
I usually ask them, did you grow up with your father? And overwhelmingly, most of these women say no. And then typically I would ask them, well, if you did grow up with a man, if you did grow up with a father, do you think you would be in the situation that you were in? Do you think you would have had a child out of wedlock? Do you think he would have allowed you to get all of these tattoos on your body? And overwhelmingly, most of the women typically say no, that they recognize that if there was a strong man that was in the home, they would not be in the predicament that they are in. Because most women are typically deceived into many of these practices of you know, a promiscuity, single motherhood, and of course, the utilization of uh, body markings. This is by no means new. This happened even in biblical times. The Bible talked heavily about those who would basically uh, mark their bodies or scar their bodies. And typically what they were referring to were tattoo. And many of these individuals typically got involved with promiscuity. They went off and they served other gods. There's numerous instances of the, of the Bible of the men going off basically um, going into these different tribes areas and basically finding these women who basically were nothing more than temple prostitutes, right? They were women who were utilized in the form of sex acts, prostitution, basically revolving around the service of other gods. And you've basically seen that you can go through most periods of history and you will find some level of of prostitution in some way, shape, or form. You in in the most modern day that you might think of it are, for example, nuns. Nuns, that's <laughs> nuns are basically your like your modern day form of prostitution. Because if you actually look back in the Roman Catholic history, there were numerous, numerous uh, instances where they found uh, dead babies inside of. Um, Inside of the old Roman Catholic churches, there were numerous bones of illegitimate children that were born because, of course, you know, you have men who are told they need to abstain from women. And then you have the women who are told they need to abstain from the men because they've made a vow, even though God never required anybody to do any of those things. And as a result, you end up with these women prostituting themselves and, of course, having illegitimate children. And, of course, unfortunately, many of those children being put to death. Quite similar to what we have today, right? Where we have many individuals who are basically becoming illegitimately pregnant. And then, of course, because they don't want to be a single mother, they end up putting these children to death. And I believe currently, and my like I did in one of my last videos, basically, um, there's about 117,000 abortions that take part that, that take place globally every single day. There are 100, about 117,000 women who basically have their unborn child ripped from their womb because they either don't have a man in their life that is going to stick around or they got pregnant by a man that they basically don't want to have his offspring. And as a result, they reap the rewards. Like, you know, the Bible is very clear when it said, God is not one to be mocked. For whatever a man sows, this is what he will reap. He who sows with a view to the flesh will reap corruption from the from the flesh. But of course, he that reaped that 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 sowed uh, according to the spirit would reap life from the spirit. And this is basically what many, especially many women nowadays, are basically reaping the result of not having someone that they can pair with, and often become easily overpowered physically, emotionally, and spiritually here in America and in many other countries that I've been to. Hopefully, in the next generations to come, hopefully there will be a revival to going back to the God of the Bible, or maybe the Bible will just be completely fulfilled in its nature, and humanity will basically get its second chance uh, before God. But we'll have to wait and see how things are going to take place here in the States. But I have no doubt moving forward from this time period going forward that the the outlook for women is very bleak here in America. Many will end up either being impoverished, basically hoping to find some sort of a man uh, to attach themselves to, or like I've seen in many countries where the women typically pair up with each other and then they basically prostitute themselves. 
um, to basically uh, foreigners. And this, you know, if you've gone to, and I've even seen other American women do this. When I've gone on vacations and I've gone to other countries, I will typically meet many young American women uh, or women for uh, from like other Western countries who are basically going out there and they're prostituting themselves either like on, uh, what's it called? I forget the name of that app. Anyways, typically on any sort of, you know, fancy dating app, they will typically be going out there, you know, looking for sugar daddies, etc. And this is basically, basically becoming a very normal for women to do this, not realizing the long term psychological effects that it's going to have on many of them. And it's very unfortunate because it doesn't have to be that way. But unfortunately, because of as the Bible says, you know, the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. So you already have to contend with the wicked spirit forces that Paul talked about that live in the heavenly places that are basically daily um, doing what they can to corrupt the earth. And then on top of that, you have wicked men and women who are basically in politics, who are basically you know enjoying the power. We've seen that here in New York, where you have individuals like Andrew, who, Andrew Cuomo, who have basically uh, destroyed the economy here in New York just for the purpose of making you know Donald Trump look bad. And you have these sort of wicked individuals that have that basically have uh, come into power, and the common people have no way to fend themselves off, especially when. The, the you know they're not living together as a couple right because they're not living together as a couple they can't they can't draw strength from each other because many of these individuals are of course you know living alone it's the unfortunate reality of where we find ourselves and it is not going to get better unfortunately my advice for many of you if you have not had the opportunity to read the bible i would recommend that you do start reading the bible much of the wisdom that from the years that I grew up in the church, and even though I ended up leaving the church, I, I've never forgotten a lot of the wise teachings that the Bible has uh, basically given me. And many of the times, even when I've gone astray, and I've lived my life, and I've you know done the whole city life, and lived the life of fornication, and I've always seen the outcome of what the scriptures say to always come true. And for many of you, you're going to be living the, the unfortunate... Uh, aspect of the bible where it says you will reap what you sow and america will reap what it has sown and the future of america and the future for many of you women out there is not looking very good